last year, the last two years has been, you know, is this guy potentially the, the kind of smart, a smarter, more competent, and therefore more dangerous in some ways uh, version of Donald Trump? And that's kind of been his, he's kind of out to the Trumpiest governor in the country uh, in what is now the kind of home, I'm, I'm afraid to say to you about your ancestral home, uh, one of your ancestral homes, uh, Florida, the, the heart of Trump country. Uh, is that what DeSantis is, right? Is he the kind of more <laughs> rational, more competent, uh, not quite so crazy version of Donald Trump? But he, I think that's what he's, he's trying to do, and that's what he's trying to be. And I think the question you're raising is whether, is it possible that, that, that you, if you take a little bit, of, if you take the Trump out, if, it's like being a less crazy version, a more competent version of Donald Trump makes you not really that Trumpy at all, and then that makes you an ordinary politician again. And I think that is the, the, what... what what DeSantis is flirting with, that he can be, he can be Trump and get away with it because there seems to have been over the last four years an unending tolerance of that in the Republican Party, where the political tricks, the irrational uh, anti-science policies, the culture wars, all of that stuff that Republicans continue to give Donald Trump a wide berth on that. Can Ron DeSantis get away with that indefinitely in the face of COVID? Uh, and, and when he's not actually Donald Trump, I think, you know, if, if you're right and we're about to reach that tipping point in, in Florida because of the, the potency, the threat, and the damage of COVID, we'll, we're going to start to, we're not just going to learn something about the politics of COVID, we're going to learn <coughs> something about how uh, transferable Donald Trump's theatrics are to non-Trump politicians. Don, Ron uh, Santos may be about to learn that too. Yeah, it, 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 it'll be interesting to see. But I, uh, on the other side of that, let's just stop and look for a second and see what Ron DeSantis uh, the attention that Ron DeSantis has gotten by doing intentionally stupid things, by doing intentionally dangerous things, by doing things that will, quote, own the libs, uh, that will get own the media, uh, own, you know, you, so, you know everybody uh, that, the, that Trump supporters hate uh, are criticizing him. Uh, and when you have Hollywood actors criticizing DeSantis when you have um, Stephen King criticizing DeSantis, when you have people in the media criticizing DeSantis. Um, I mean, that's a gold mine. And, he's, and of course, he's being rewarded in a sense for doing something that endangers, that endangers children. Uh, and yet, Donald Trump learned that only made people more loyal to him. And I guess the question is, uh, you know, would Ron DeSantis rather be where he is right now or where um, Nikki Haley is or where any of the other 30 people who want to replace Donald Trump is or where Donald Trump is? I mean, DeSantis gets a lot more press now than Donald Trump. So yeah. maybe he considers placing children's lives in danger. Maybe a, uh, maybe he considers that a big political win, that he doesn't allow local school boards to take measures that would protect children in their own communities. Maybe that's a big win for him. Well, I think, it, look at it, I mean, it, it clearly has been so far. And you asked the question, obviously, he, Ron DeSantis would rather be in the position he's in than the position of any other Republican politician in the country, except for maybe Donald Trump himself. He's, you know, you're, you're right. He's, it's been a, it's been a goldmine for him in the confines of Republican politics. And he's put himself in a position where, you know, uh, if, if Donald Trump doesn't run for president in 2024, I don't know anybody in, in, in who covers national politics, uh, who doesn't think that Ron DeSantis is, is a front runner, if not the front runner for the Republican nomination. So he likes his position. And, and it's clear that, he, that the, the, what the reason he's pursuing the policies that you're talking about is because he's been in this positive feedback loop uh, in, in, the, in the hermetically sealed universe of, of Republican Trump era politics. But I, I go back to your first question, which is, like, when does the clock run out on that? Like, when does the death toll get to be too high? When does do your the friends you were citing, the, the Trumpy Floridian voters who you hear from in Florida are 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 getting to the point where they're getting fed up with it, where they're getting to the point where they're ready to say enough with these cheap theatrics. Uh, we've not we never saw that moment with Donald Trump. It never came the moment where uh, Republicans finally said enough. They never said it. A lot of the country did, for sure, and a lot of swing voters did, which is why Joe Biden's president. But 
Republican voters never did. Are they about to reach that point in Florida? How high does the death toll have to be? How much inconsistency and hypocrisy uh, does, does Ron DeSantis put on display? How many conservatives and Republicans walk away from him before that calculus changes? I don't know if we're there yet, but he's testing the problem.